Uh, good afternoon, and uh, we're ready to go. I'm sitting here at uh, Francis Financial in Lower Manhattan on a lovely sunny day. Just kidding, very rainy. Uh, with our host Stacy Francis, thank you again for having thank us. You. Uh, Brian Flood, thank you. Another guest speaker, Lisa Lindsay, whom you all know as part of PRMA. Sunina Maya, Sunana Mayra. Uh, who has been very helpful, so we thank her very much, and to our hosts again. Thank you. So welcome to our very first uh, Meet the Members seminar. As a member-driven organization, it's important, uh, I think, that we get to know our fellow members and learn about special expertise that exists within the membership. This way we can all tap into the association's collective knowledge base, where appropriate, of course, now, we understand that many of you are competitors and uh, we're not looking for any kind of proprietary information or secret sauce, but there are times when uh, collaboration is very important in our industry and it's uh, good to know about in resources within the industry and our association that might be useful to all of you. So with this in mind, we created Meet the Member Se our, our Meet the Member series, uh, which will be informational sessions that we hope to bring you every month or so that highlight the expertise of our membership. You should all be in listen-only mode, and by the fact that no one's responding, I'm presuming that you are. But uh, what we will follow is I will ask Stacy Francis some questions throughout. We would welcome you to send your questions via email as well so that uh, Brian and Stacy can address your uh, questions at some point if we have not covered that or not covered it uh, clearly or to your satisfaction. So with that, um, I would like to introduce our guest speakers today. That smiling face you see should be Brian Flood. Brian is a published author. Uh, some of you may have even read the book. I've read it. I think it's great. It's called Wealth Exposed, Insurance Planning for High Net Worth Individuals and Their Advisors, something near and dear to most of our hearts. The book is designed for high net worth individuals, their CPAs, attorneys, family office managers, financial advisors, anyone touching the high net worth consumer segment. Brian is a VP of the Flood Group and has been in business for more than 20 years. And he is a specialist, emphasis on the specialist, in the design and implementation of risk management strategies and insurance programs for high net worth individuals and families. What, we've, uh, what I've asked Brian to do today is to please talk about his experiences with his clients, what propelled him to write the book, and how his approach to the high net worth business has changed since he, he wrote the book. It's becoming famous. His picture is everywhere. And speaking of famous, we have Stacy Francis. We're very, very pleased and fortunate to have Stacy, and thank you again, Stacy. Stacy is the president and CEO of Francis Financial, Inc., um, actually one of not too many fee-only fee uh, wealth management and financial planning firms in New York. Uh, it is a boutique specializing in high net worth individuals and families as well. She is, uh, as I believe we published in our invite, a nationally recognized financial expert, and she has also been in the business for more than 20 years. And she's made many appearances, more than 100, on CNBC, NBC, CNN, PBS, you're a media darling, Stacy. I've I've already determined that. Often quoted in financial publications such as the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and Investment News. She's a certified financial planner, a registered investment advisor, and also a certified divorce financial analyst. Unfortunately, probably keeps you busy. And she's also won many many awards, uh, many too many to actually list, but two that struck me as. Uh, as very important were the Heart of Financial Planning Award from the Financial Planning Association and the Financial and Financial Planning Magazine's uh, Pro Bono Award. So she's definitely a giver back. Backer. Stacy has agreed to comment on how personal uh, pro property and casualty risk fits into her discussions when she's counseling <coughs> clients to help us and to help us understand how we as insurance professionals can better serve financial advisors and wealth managers to benefit our mutual clients. So without uh, further ado, Brian, if you could uh, you could start us off, I'd appreciate it very much. And welcome, and thank you. Okay. Uh, Sandra, thank you very much for having me here in the group. And hello to uh, everyone out there. It's a privilege to be able to speak uh, to all of you today. 
And yeah, the private client area is uh, an area that, uh, as an agency, we've decided to take a uh, a very strong focus on. Uh, we really shifted our focus uh, to this area about 10 years ago, and uh, we saw this uh, as an area with great uh, opportunity and growth uh, potential. Uh, and we've been going at it with the emphasis uh, to our clients that our fees are really earned uh, through the design and the implementation of risk-reducing strategies. Uh, okay. Um, so a key ingredient uh, to our success uh, in the private client market is our commitment to ask specific questions to better understand the lifestyles and the exposures uh, of our client. So uh, what we realized was that, uh, looking back a little more than 10 years ago, is that at the flood group we had high net worth clients, but we really needed to step up uh, to a higher level and focus with those clients. Uh, and to really deliver a, a much better experience uh, to the client. Uh, we looked at it as an opportunity to really use my knowledge and uh, the knowledge within our office uh, to focus and work closely with advisors uh, and to ask those advisors what was important with them and their client relationships. What do we need uh, to help them deal better with their clients and ultimately help us deal better with their clients? Uh, and when you really get down to it, filter through a, a bottom line, better experience uh, for the client. The answer that we came, uh, we saw coming back from advisors was uh, a reliability, uh, b the knowledge. They were looking more for for the knowledge rather than just product solution, uh, and they wanted to know the uh, the contacts that we had and the ability to provide advanced solutions. Uh, and those contacts can come in a number of different service areas. Uh, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, with art appraisal services, home appraisal services, uh, and various other services to the high net worth client. Uh, and probably the most important was uh, that they wanted to see that we were taking the time to really learn about the client themselves and to really understand the individual client's lifestyle before attempting to bring product solution to them. Uh, ultimately, on our end, we found, too, that clients were willing to pay for the knowledge and the solutions, and uh, that really <laughs> that really helped us uh, migrate our business from being at the level of vendor to being that of trusted advisor, uh, and working with the others in the advisory role. Uh, so, Sandra, you on? Speak a little louder. Okay. Uh, about two years ago, I decided to write a book about this topic uh, called Wealth Exposed Insurance Planning for High Net Worth Individuals uh, and Their Advisors. It was a book that uh, I looked for to share with my clients, but I just wasn't able to find. And probably like several of you uh, that are on the call here, uh, I was really looking to change the insurance message. I, I just find that we're all bombarded far too much with commercials from the mass market companies and that that influence of those commercials filters through ultimately to our, our clients, especially those clients on the high net worth basis. Um, it would drive me a little bit crazy, as I'm sure uh, some of you have probably had the experience of when you get in front of a high net worth client and you see that they've been dealing with an 800 number or a mass market company that they have really outgrown just years and years ago, and you scratch your head as to why they're there. Um, so I looked at writing the book is a, un is a unique way to speak to the advisors and to get this message out there that these clients do have unique needs, unique exposures, uh, that there is a professional base of brokers that are out there that have the knowledge and the expertise uh, to bring the right solutions to these clients. Uh, and I really wanted to emphasize um, that the advanced solutions for the high net worth uh, are required uh, and should be part of the conversation uh, that uh, advisors are having with uh, with their clients. Okay, so with uh, do you want to those questions? Not yet. So I did find that wealth managers uh, and financial advisors definitely have an interest uh, in the property and casualty uh, segment. Uh, that many wealth managers are now including property and casualty in their client conversations. Uh, and that property and casualty is viewed as an important component of their financial planning, and that these advisors, they really want to understand it more uh, more deeply, not so much in a very technical in and out of the product knowledge, 
Um, but more from the being able to have the conversation with them, uh, I'd say uh, in an understanding manner of how it would help them address their exposures. Uh, and that sharing your knowledge with them is the key. You really want to help the advisors learn. Uh, and ultimately, that would help them uh, make it easier to bring the business back to yourself. We lost the bottom part of the page. Well, let's, let's see. That's okay, I got it. Um, I've also found that wealth managers uh, and financial advisors, they do want to align uh, with knowledgeable brokers and that the more knowledge focused and product focused you have uh, and the more you have the ability to show that you understand the client needs, the better off. So really the wealth managers and financial advisors can be your advocate. Thanks, Brian. I think you've made some excellent points here and uh, the changing the message, the raising the idea of the value of the unique needs and so on. And we like to think that uh, financial advisors, Stacey, always think we're a very important part of it. But I'd like to know, <clears throat> since you've been working in this industry, have you always felt that uh, this was an important part of, of what you were talking to about, you know, with your clients? That's a great question. Um, you know, for us, we've always been a comprehensive financial planning firm. We've um, been uh, at this now for a little over 11 years. But I have to tell you that we have not necessarily been the norm. But there's some great news for everyone here on the call today, and that is because more advisors are realizing the importance of comprehensive financial planning. And what does that include? Well, that includes a very thorough and deep assessment of property and casualty insurance. And so with that, we are seeing reports. Crudelli Associates just released a, a wonderful report detailing the U.S. retail advisor advice relationship, sorting out the winners from the losers of those financial advisors. In fact, this report reveals that in 43% plan to offer comprehensive financial planning by 2016. And right now, we're only seeing 33%. So what does that mean? While we're only at 33%, increasing by 10%, we're looking at a huge increase in only a few short years. So you may ask yourself, well, why is this? It's because financial advisors need to retain their clients. And part of the most important piece of retaining your clients is being able to be relational, not transactional. Being able to be consultative versus authoritative. And so one of the pieces, and we'll talk more about this as we go forward, but we have been able to have almost a 100% retention rate of our clients. And the reason why is because it's not just investment advice. No financial advisor will be profitable, will be successful in this new decade if they're solely focusing on investment advice. Now, the smart, savvy, high net worth consumer needs to know more. And that includes assessment of their automobile insurance, homeowners, renters insurance, of course, umbrella. It can also include areas such as directors and officers insurance, workers' compensation. These are all things that will keep your clients up at night. And if you can't answer them as a financial advisor, guess what? A smarter financial advisor will work with a consultant, uh, a property and casualty consultant expert, and, and they will. Fantastic to our ears. Um, when you talk to clients about it, wh how do you usually bring this up? Do you have any advice on that? Because it sounds like, um, again, you're totally aligned with what we hope to get across to clients. But do they generally re receive it well? Or Th That's a great <clears throat> question. So here are, here are a few tips um, for all of you here on the call today. Um, it's really important for you to explain your value to financial advisors and explain to them how can they bring this up. Because I will tell you, those less enlightened advisors out there um, sometimes have a fear about delving into an area where maybe they don't feel as comfortable or as knowledgeable. And so how do you do this? Well, what we do is we actually do the old plain vanilla, you know, financial plan that includes all the sections, including estate planning. And, of course, there's that risk management. That's the perfect opportunity 
we were able to go through the policies, identify a few, a few key areas where we know there are some problems. And as part of that question that clients have of what should I do about that, that's when we make an introduction to someone like you, someone who is a financial expert. So that's for the person, uh, the advisor who is writing financial plans. Um, if you ask them, you know, do you create some type of output, that's something that they can easily add. But what do you say to the advisor who maybe doesn't, um, isn't necessarily in the dinosaur age where we are, um, doesn't do those big uh, vanilla, you know, those, those big, uh, big uh, comprehensive financial plans? You can say to them, would you like to have more business? Any advisor you talk to is going to say yes. And you answer, let me tell you how I can bring you more business and how you can keep your clients. And that's where you can offer as a consultative approach to be there to answer questions, even attend meetings with that client to answer questions, uh, again, about their, their insurance. The biggest thing that you are going to have to leap over, that biggest hurdle is actually the financial advisor and their feeling of, of lack of information to be able to talk about this. So if you can give them the right questions to ask and also the materials they need to introduce you to bring you into the environment is great because if anything, the advisor wants you involved because you're going to make them look really good and really smart. Great great advice. Thank you. Um, Brian, maybe you could talk a little bit more about you know, talking about educating financial planners and advisors and so on. Can you talk a little bit more about how you would typically introduce some of the, uh, you know, unique areas that they need to address? Okay. Yeah, on the uh, slide that we're looking at here, uh, this is one I found to be uh, very effective, uh, and I've used this at different conferences that I've uh, spoken at and organizations that I've uh, spoken to. Uh, and this one here talks about personal liabilities with regard to the high net worth and what conversations can trigger off of this just by looking at the lifestyle that the high net worth is living. And that lifestyle is going to include uh, planes and chauffeurs and crew on their vessels, uh, helicopters and fancy cars, <clears throat> large homes, domestic staff, uh, and all of these open up a variety of liability exposures. Uh, and when we look at somebody, let's say, with a large home, a uh, great liability question to ask there is, well, what kind of events are you hosting at your home? Are you hosting the, the hospital gala and having hundreds of people to your home? Uh, and a question that I just used uh, acquiring a new client over the weekend had to do with their domestic staff. Uh, and the question I posed was, well, what are the hiring practices that you have? Because you do have a large domestic staff. Just tell me about your hiring practices. I know you run a large uh, real estate corporation, I'm sure you have very strict hiring practices there. Do you use those same type of practices to hire people coming into your home? And the answer was no. And um, they said that's something that we need to address. And we said, okay, fine. Well, we can help work with you on that. So uh, from the personal liability side, that's an area that we do emphasize uh, in the conversation with them is really helping the advisors understand the liabilities of the high net worth client. And on the property side, uh, when I'm meeting with the client or, or their advisors uh, or doing a presentation even, this is a, another slide I like to use where I talk about the various just property exposures uh, that we typically find are the least addressed. And that includes uh, their collections, uh, their what I call the fun equipment, their toys, which is going to be their ATVs and their jet skis and their quads, uh, and then their vacation properties, uh, and what are they doing with their various collections, whether it be wine, art, jewelry? Uh, how are they managing those collections? Are they keeping them up to date? When were they last valued? Are they sharing that information with their advisor, uh, with somebody like Stacy, to be able to turn around to them and say, I just had my wine collection appraised and the value went up another million dollars because I have some very collectible bottles. Uh, that's something that an advisor would want to know, uh, where there's a significant change in somebody's wealth because of an increase in the value of their collectibles. So I found these to be very effective ways to talk to advisors in open conversation. Who, who doesn't like pictures? I mean, we all like the pictures. So uh, 
I, I find this a very effective way to present those particular issues to clients and, and advisors as well. Um, and one of the things that, that I found in my career in this business is people care a lot about their passions as opposed to their things. So, Stacy, um, when you talk to your clients, do they really understand how their physical assets and the protection of it fits in? Do you talk to them in terms of how to protect it because it's their passion, or maybe you just hand it off? What 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 would you typically do as part of your process to introduce that to them? You know, typically our, our clients, um, you know, they know they have uh, property and casualty insurance. They, they understand that they have these policies because they, they pay the premiums. And Usually when we ask them to, to bring in their declarations page, they bring in their, their quarterly or their yearly bill, and they think that gives us enough information. So um, what that shows is that they don't really realize the importance of what this insurance is and, uh, more importantly, what insurance they actually have. This can be a big problem because what you need to be telling that financial advisor and what we tell our clients, too, is that we can do a phenomenal job. Knock on wood, we can get you a 10%, 12%, even a 15% return in your portfolio, give us a good year. However, all of that hard work, all of your dollars that you have saved, that you have earned, that you have put away, can be gone in an instant. Just think about that. What would your life look like if it was all taken away from you? And explaining that to that client and also giving your advisor contacts, the tools to ask that question, they will have the ability to engage their clients in a conversation that they've never had before, most likely. Because the typical insurance agent, not anyone on this call, I'm sure, but the typical <laughs> insurance agent writes the policy and the client never hears from them again. And sometimes, even when that policy was first written for them, it wasn't written from a place where there was a deep assessment, such as Brian mentioned with his clients that he just brought on, a deep assessment of their lifestyle, of their passions, of their things. And so you have a, a real ability to engage clients in a way that they've never been engaged and help them understand the importance about insurance. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, if, if all the financial advisors were, were like Stacy, we, we probably wouldn't have to work that hard because you get it. Um, one of the things we're trying to do, uh, Stacy, with our association is, um, is you know, have everyone uh, work toward raising awareness for for the high net worth uh, personal insurance as a specialty. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a lot of good things in your in your last uh, commentary. Um, what particular value or, or values do you see when someone like Brian or some of our folks on the phone, who are specialists in this area, the difference they bring to, to the client discussion than someone that just we would call just places coverage or a fulfiller? What, what do you, uh, do you see a difference there and why? Yeah. Um we we see a very very big uh difference between someone who's who's just form filling and someone who really understands the high net worth space. And that's because that person has a much more consultative approach to the entire situation. And what we have found is that we have been able to help clients along and make sure that they're 100% protected so that they can sleep at night. Um, not that this always happens, but there are times when by working with a fantastic uh, insurance advisor, we're actually able to get them more coverage for less money. Now, that doesn't always happen, but it does happen in certain cases. And I have to tell you that I like to be a superhero. Hmm. And that, even though I've had nothing to do with it except making that introduction, makes me look like a superhero. Um, and so for, for what I, you know, the people that I've worked with, and I've, I've worked with, you know, over the last decade plus, um, many different people, but I find that our best relationships with insurance professionals 
are relationships where they go through, they take the time, they ask questions, they alert us to risks and exposures that the client and, and, and we may not have even even thought of. Sometimes there's even conversations um, with the client not on the phone, and that's helpful for us too because it's a learning process. Um, I know that I'll never know as much as Brian does about insurance, but I appreciate that Brian is willing to talk to me, to educate me, so that going forward with this client, but also other clients, I can look for clues where there are big gaps, risk exposures that that I, I may not be aware of where we are today. So it's essentially being a team and trying to be a team with that financial advisor um, is is really really helpful. You again, great points, and uh, you you made a couple of comments about premium, and I, I wanted to add something to that because many times that's what people are looking for, a reduction yeah. in premium. And you, you made a good point because in the hands of the right people, asking the right questions, the tighter risk management program often does reduce premium. It's not what we're about, but it does result in that sometimes. So, Absolutely. Uh, and I think yeah. that's very helpful that people understand that. Yeah. Right, so looking at the next slide here, uh, we're getting into talking about uh, personal risk management. Uh, which is a uh, big focus of the organization here. Uh, and it's really the critical component to the conversation that you want to have with the financial advisors and aligning with the financial advisors. Uh, and it's a, the conversation that can differentiate you and help you acquire and retain the high net worth clients. And also for folks like Stacy, uh, by handing them the right tools and knowledge to use, it can also help them with the acquisition and retention of high net worth clients. Uh, it's very different than what the industry message is that's out there that we alluded to earlier, it's just that constant drumbeat of this is a commodity and you want it for as low a price as you can get it, and there's no sense using a broker, just call an 800 number, and in a matter of minutes, you're going to save money. We've all heard that one far too many times. Um, but we understand it's not a commodity. Really what we're dealing with here are legal documents, uh, and sometimes when I'm talking with Stacy about it, we'll say, it's an asset. It's some, It's a pool of money that is there, available, waiting to be deployed in the event something terrible happens to this client. Uh, it's that silent asset just waiting to be tapped. Uh, and that really is all about personal risk management. Uh, and what we found with a lot of the clients uh, is that in the beginning, they started out with uh, lives that were very simple, which is why they went with the mass market uh, carriers or their plans are designed uh, just the, without any sort of risk management personal risk management brought into the equation. Uh, but then ultimately, they've reached that ceiling of complexity with uh, either the insurers that they're working with not being able to uh, keep up with the uh, exposures of their lifestyle and or the brokers that they're working with just not having the knowledge and the expertise. And I think it's really as an association, what we're looking to advance here uh, is growing that knowledge base uh, and also uh, being able to bring those advanced solutions as the client's needs grow uh, and need, they have that need for the advanced solutions. So let's talk about weaving it all together. I wanted to just make Go sure ahead. we didn't uh, leave anything out because I think Stacy has given some great tips here um, and a few that I've uh, captured, but um, protecting their nest egg and so on, education, making you look good. Is there is there a way any other way that uh, we can help uh, help you make make you look good or we can better serve you that we haven't touched on that would be helpful to the listeners how could we um, how could we do a better job for you that's a great great question um, you know a, a, a couple of things that is help you know that are that that might be helpful um, one of the most Frequent things we see is that when we do an overall assessment of someone's insurance portfolio, um, every once in a while it will come back to be less expensive, but most of the time it's not. It's more expensive because we're moving from a Geico. Um, you know, I, I love the gecko, but it's very um, cute. 
cute. He's very cute, but that, um, you know, who do I want on a desert island? Um, I don't want the gecko. I would probably prefer Chubb or Ace or, or uh, Fireman. So, you know, one of the challenges we have with our clients is the fact that, you know, by working with you, doing the right thing for our clients, it's going to probably cost them more money. So what can we do about it? One of the best things we can do is have you run that by us first because we want to create our arguments, similar to like a lawyer would, of why this is valuable. And there's a couple ways we can do that. Number one, if we're using financial planning software, we can run the premium through the software and show that, guess what? They can afford it. Then that concern of the client it's gone. It's gone. So we can actually show them on paper. We've run this higher premium through, and guess what? Your plan looks lovely. Um, if the advisor does not use any type of, of software or anything like that, um, what you need to do is show them the alternative of what happens, your risk exposure, and if they lose it all. And helping the advisor as best as they can to quantify that uh, so that when you, you talk to the client, the client doesn't just look at the dollar amount, but is able to look at it, just as Brian said, as an asset that can be deployed in the event of an emergency, in the event of, of a, a disaster. Um, and also, I would say, the final piece that would be very helpful, because I know I struggle with this, but the most powerful and persuasive way to help someone understand the importance of insurance is sharing stories. So please share with that advisor. Maybe you had a client with a similar profile, um, similar risks, that, that unfortunately they didn't you know, they came to you before they got the insurance they needed, and it devastated their life. We need those stories because I will tell you the hardest part of my job is not putting together an investment portfolio and getting the client's money working. They're ready to do that from day one. The hardest part is following up, sometimes stalking clients <laughs> to get them to get this insurance in place. And sometimes it can take a year. It can take two, even three years. And so any stories you have would be very, very helpful for us when we're, when we're going out to our clients um, explaining this to them. Great, great advice. Excellent. So, Brian, you want to kind of pull together both of everything that you're saying maybe so that we can uh, leave our listeners with some thoughts on how to weave it all together. How to weave it all together. Uh, I think we all understand that the, the high net worth, ultra high net worth, their personal risk management and their insurance unique, uh, needs, they are unique, uh, far different than uh, the whole rest of the marketplace. Uh, and that personal risk management really is the critical component to protecting wealth. We can all pull together insurance products, and insurance products are great, uh, but it's really digging in on that risk management side, that working with the advisor, uh, somebody like Stacy, to really understand the, the client's lifestyle uh, and the various risks uh, and the risk management techniques that may be needed uh, for them that are not insurance product techniques uh, are very important to have those discussions. Uh, and that the wealth managers, the, they are very interested in property casualty insurance, uh, and they do want to have, uh, and as Stacy just gave examples of uh, with herself, and they are having this property casualty uh, conversation with their clients. So they do want our knowledge. They do want to hear our stories. Uh, in the book that I wrote, the way that I wrote the book, it was all anecdotes and stories. I did not write a technical book. I wrote a story book. Uh, there's and, a whole section with case studies. In and there's a whole actually. section with case studies. Excellent. Yeah, and that's because I wanted it to be readable for somebody like Stacy uh, with what she was looking for, which was stories and case studies, because uh, that's really what's going to help the financial uh, advisors uh, learn more about how uh, the personal risk management uh, and how the products that are designed for the high net worth can bring about solutions for their clients. Uh, so and we see that the insurance companies are, are innovating to keep pace 
with the changes in the high net worth lifestyle and exposures. Uh, I'm sure you get the same emails I do from the folks at uh, ACE and AIG, Chubb and Fireman's and Pure with uh, constant product updates, uh, which is great. Uh, but it really comes down to, uh, for ourselves, understanding that our value is in our knowledge uh, and what we can bring in the conversations that we can have. Uh, that's a very different conversation than the one the mass marketplace is trying to broadcast uh, and that our value is our knowledge and our ability to bring the personal risk management solutions. Great. Um, to kind of finish our the presentation portion of our program, just to make sure some of the key points were, you know, put forth, uh, or if there was something that you wanted to add, um, start with you, Brian. Do you have three points, or if you have a few more, because tips are very important that you can share with the listeners that will help them in doing this every day? Could you? Okay. Yeah, there are just a few items that I found to be some, some real nice hot buttons uh, that are good takeaways uh, from what I've seen in conversations that I've been having uh, with advisors and with clients, uh, and that there are many uh, personal risk management issues that the advisors do want to know how to handle. Uh, and some of the hot ones that are out there right now are social media, identity theft, uh, employment practices, uh, and managing the, the collections and uh, risk management with the collections, especially with what happened with Hurricane Sandy and people lost their, their wine cellars uh, downtown Manhattan. Uh, so we want to talk about uh, the types of solutions that are available uh, for these situations on the product side and on the personal risk management side. Uh, and the second thing is that the advisors, yes, they do want to know how to help their clients with personal risk management uh, and insurance. So, again, provide those tools to them. As, as Stacy said, provide the stories that help her convey the message. Uh, the stories are better than the product brochures. Uh, the stories will go much further. So look at it in a positive way when you go in to visit with these advisors, not hat in hand like they're doing you a favor. You're going to do them a favor. Oh, you're going to bring a lot of value to the table for them, So. Uh, and that really boils down to my third point is uh, that as an association, I think this is great what the association is doing in lifting this category uh, because we really are specialists uh, that uh, have and should have a seat at the table with the high net worth client and their advisory team. We are a critical component of their uh, planning. Uh, we are a financial defense mechanism that they can use as part of their planning. So we do want to be at the table with the advisors, uh, and we should be proud of the of the, uh, the message that's being broadcast through this uh, through the association. I really applaud it. You guys are doing a terrific job. Well said. Thank you, Stacy. Any parting thoughts uh, in terms of takeaways for the for the group? You've mentioned some very good things. Um, I was hearing in the last uh, the last segment. Strategic partner, you know, work with us, make sure we're aware. Um, if you had three points or, again, more, you seem to be a font of, of wisdom yeah. here. <laughs> well, one, one of the biggest questions um, that that I think many of you might have on the back of in the back of your mind is, well, that's great, but how do we get in front of these wealth advisors? How do we do that? Um, I, I, I will be honest that we get – one, sometimes two insurance professionals reaching out to us to have a meeting um, every single week. And it might be insurance professionals for, for life insurance or, or whatever. Um, but how do, you, how do you get yourself in front of that person and become the preferred person that as soon as there's an insurance question, that advisor thinks of you? So here are a couple keys. And, and so get out your pen. Um, my one, two, three punch. Um, first, have lunches. And that lunch will be four to five people. You pay for the bill and invite those team members, that advisory team, all those people who work in the area of high net worth. And so that could be a trust and estate attorney. It could be a, a business broker, um, a, you know, a, a high-profile CPA. Uh, this is something that's really important. And we do this twice a month. We rent the restaurant for the whole year so that we can't flip and not do our, our lunch. 
And we have found it to be very, very, very helpful. So we would tell you to do the same thing and make sure one of the people at that table, that seat, is that financial advisor, and they will be indebted to you forever for introducing you to those other wonderful referral partners. Hold a CE, Continuing Education Program, where financial advisors can attend. And ideally, you know, try to uh, hook up with the Financial Planning Association or some of the other NAFA, National Association of Personal Financial Advisors. But if you can't, hold your own and invite all the advisors that you need, um, that you, you want to form a relationship with, and give them this great content of how they can be on the cutting edge of helping their clients protect themselves from these exposures. And number three, I, I, this is all about giver's gain. And um, I truly believe that if you help other people, if you if you help advisors, they'll, they'll think of you. And so I, I would say um, buy and, and give them the book, Wealth Exposed, that Brian wrote. Um, it's a great book, and it's one of the only books that I've ever seen talking about property and casualty insurance in a way that's interesting and it's based on stories. And these are stories that we can directly apply to our business. And I know that as I read through, I thought, oh, my gosh, that's a client that um, it reminds me of that client. And so I, I would say, you know, reach out to them, send them the book, and um, call to make sure that they, they got it and said, I, I thought of this book. I thought it would really help your practice. And if you have any questions about your clients um, related to their insurance needs, hey, reach out. I'm, I'm happy here just to kind of bounce ideas off and um, give you information. Well, that's that very, very good advice. Thank you very much. Um, we do have some questions. Uh, first question is from uh, Jim Kane, someone we know very well. Uh, Jim's question is, does Stacy have any benchmarks for the percentage of a typical household expense that goes to insurance? Great question. So when we look at insurance, we look at the all-in number. So that insurance number includes property and casualty. It includes uh, life insurance, disability. Also, of course, medical insurance. Um, and we add that number in. So uh, it's it's very often um, that we might see a total you know total insurance cost of forty fifty thousand sixty thousand um, dollars we we don't look at the percentage as much because what we find is that we're we can be more specific and actually build it into the model and and again model it out for them um, so we don't necessarily use a percentage but um, you know many clients come to us and they they are at Geico, they are. It pains me to say, you know, they they are at State Farm, and they might only be paying four thousand dollars in total for all their insurance through their auto and their homeowners, um, and you know, it, it's really not appropriate when they have three, four, you know, five million dollars. So we, we'll look at that, saying instead of as a percentage of their budget, we'll say. Hey, you're paying four thousand dollars to protect four million dollars. That really, really does not make sense. Um, because again, percentages we like to steer clear of. Because we have some clients that um, require more than twenty percent of their budget to go towards insurance, and others it might only be five to ten. Presume that answers your question, Jim. If you need more, please email. Um, you mentioned I had a question you had you mentioned earlier um retention of clients. I know you made a couple of references did and if you gave a percentage, I'm sorry, I missed it, but is there a percentage of retention or how it goes up if people have the open architecture and so on and bring mm -hmm. in other advisors or is it more of a just common knowledge or well, there's, there's you know the the average uh the retention for the average advisor for 2013 um, was, was actually not not too bad. It was about 93% of, of clients. Um, I I know that advisors that are more comprehensive, um, similar to us, I mean, our typical retention is closer to um, 99%. We've had a couple of years where it's, it's 100%. I think what is really important, too, is looking at the growth rate. So it's not only retention, but it's the growth rate. So the average mid-size investment management firm, similar to us, grew at uh, a total of about 
8% last year. For us, our assets under management growth was 53%. The year before, in 2012, the uh, growth was a little higher. It was 9% for the average, and for us, it was actually 54%. Um, so you'll see that having a more comprehensive approach, including insurance, it helps not only with that retention, uh, which is important, um, but even more importantly, you'll see that the growth rates for those firms that are have this included in their practice, are it's, it's phenomenally, phenomenally higher. And that's part of the the key takeaway that you need to be telling uh, financial advisors when you go to meet with them. After you send them the book, you invite them to a continuing ed program and, and also introducing them to some great people. Um, trust me, no other insurance professionals are, are, are doing that. They're not talking about the value and proposition of what they bring um, to the advisor. Great. Uh, one final question I have, unless someone else uh, has seen one. Um, are there common questions people ask uh, uh, about insurance? Any, it can be anything, medical life, uh, property and casualty. Primarily, we're interested in property and casualty, but when you bring up the topic, they ask about, you know, umbrella liability. They ask about their collections. They ask, because you gave three examples, Brian, of good questions. But do you see a common thread? Let me ask you that. Um, you know, I, I had a client who he made me giggle. Uh, he has a really good uh, sense of humor. And I said that we really need to talk about his umbrella insurance and his next check-in meeting. And so he comes in, and uh, it, it wasn't raining that day, and he had his umbrella. He said, I, I brought my umbrella, and I, I think we're going to talk about insurance on it. And he was joking. He was joking. But um, it just goes to show you that, um, to be honest, most clients have, have no clue what umbrella insurance is. Um, and that, I mean, Brian is probably more of an expert um, than, than I am, but that's where I see um, the majority of our clients being um, the, the, the under, most underinsured. Mm -hmm. And they feel like, well, I'm not a very risky person. Um, I'm, you know, I may or may not, um, you know, most likely I won't be the victim of, of a, a lawsuit. And again, if you can share the, the stories of people who didn't have the right umbrella insurance and what happened to them, and, and actually I share a story because I was sued. And um, it happened when I was only 13 years old. And um, I got in an accident on an ATV, and I had a friend on the back uh, of that ATV, and she got one stitch. But her parents sued my parents for a million dollars. Now, in the end, it was a happy story. She's not my best friend anymore. <laughs> but, um, but it was a happy story because we had the insurance to be able to cover it because um, and, and actually, there, it wasn't much of a payout, right? <laughs> you can only imagine for, for one stitch. But here it is, you know, because you have children, because you might have a dog, because you might have domestic staff, um, because you might have events or um, social functions in your home, um, these are things that most people don't realize they, they have a risk to. So that's where I see most people need your expertise to educate them about these risk factors, the factors that they, they may not realize. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Lisa Lindsay here in the right. Stacy. Um, the question I have is you've shared with us some good information about how to establish a, a relationship with a trusted advisor to high net worth individuals who would find value in what we do in, as being specialists in this insurance area. And, and I know that oftentimes I think we struggle with how much more time should I put into this relationship? Are they going to get it? Are they going to make the referral? And I'm, I'm interested um, if you could give some advice around um, is it just a function of keeping at them the way you do with your clients or pretty much after a couple of conversations, if somebody's not really buying in, should we just move on? Because sometimes a lot of good lunches are just that, a lot of good lunches. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and I think it's interesting. It's uh, Boy, this is a question I have, too. Um, not necessarily, but for, for me, you know, 
for us a, a great source of, of clients uh, happens to be matrimonial attorneys uh, because we have a specialty and niche of, of high net worth clients going through divorce. How do we tackle that? And so we have a list of centers, uh, center of influence. Our list is 100 long, but I have a whole phenomenal staff, um, group of people who help us reach out to those 100 people every single month. Now, for you, what I would do is I would identify who are your top 10 financial advisors that you want to be the people to go to bat for you. And you have to understand that after one conversation, or, or maybe even two, when you look at the trust funnel, and the trust funnel is one, two, three. Three being the area where those people know you, like you, trust you, that they would actually go to bat. Most individuals that you meet, when you first meet with them, they're acquaintances. They're in that one level. They're at the, they're at the top of the funnel. And it's not until the relationship starts to progress where you might be helping them. You could give them some advice, send them a, a, an article, um, you know, help them with a, a very difficult client situation where you go into two. And then slowly you'll see that some of those people will actually go into three. And that three is the ideal zone where that's where you're going to get a referral. And this is true of financial advisors. It's true of T&E attorneys. But the most important thing is to think about is what do you need to do in that trust funnel uh, from one and getting them to three. And part of it is ongoing outreach, out, ongoing thinking about how can I help them. And that might be, um, you know, all these different things that we mentioned, but it, it, it could be many other things. But frequent contact, so you're top of mind. You are top of mind because I will tell you, we all feel that, that there's so much going on. You meet with someone for lunch, and you forget about that maybe even three or four days later. So how, do you, how can you stay in front of them? Great, thanks. Great question, great answer. Maybe a great way to end our a presentation. Thank you so much, both you, Brian and Stacy. Everyone you. at Fi uh, Francis Financial, you've been wonderful, very helpful. Uh, I'm told that a copy of the presentation and the um, a link to the recording will be available and be sent to you, so you can go back and listen to it over and over again if you prefer. Um, again, this was the first of our Meet the Members. You two have made it a great success for us. Thank you very much. Any of you out there that have thoughts about uh, ideas for our Meet the Member, you have a special expertise or someone you know that you want to share, please let us know because uh, we expect these to be ongoing. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and I appreciate it. Have a good day. Okay.